I mean, would it be possible to get like a little makeup under the eyes just to cover up the, I mean, what about Botox? Is it too late to get some Botox? Oh, hi everybody. I know what you're thinking right now. You're thinking, oh, it is a St. Hallow's Eve celebration. And look, that guy, that's the Crypt Keeper, right? No, but you are so close. You see, the good people over at Code Orange decided, you know what, let's do another Mud Bangers Ball. Let's bring back Mud TV and do the Mud Bangers Ball. Sort of a pre-show for Back Inside the Glass. And they said, you know what, let's see if we can dig up the rotting, decaying flesh of Ricky Rackman. You know the guy that used to host Head Bangers Ball back in the 1800s. You know the guy that speaks of himself in third person, that's me. And uh, I am back, and I'm, I'm excited. It's gonna be a blast. I'm not gonna be playing some videos. I'm gonna be playing some heavy videos that are all completely different from one another. They all come from different genres. I hate using that term, genres, because there's so many. I can't even keep them in the track. But we're gonna be playing some videos. I'm looking forward to that. We've also got live performance by Machine Girl, Year of the Knife. Year of the Knife is gonna be performing their new album, which is called Internal Incarceration. They're gonna be playing the new album live in its entirety. Jesus Peace is also gonna be performing live, and oh yeah, Code Orange is playing. But this is is nothing like you've seen before. I mean, I know that we haven't had the chance to go to any live shows, but Code Orange has been doing these streaming things. They've been pretty cool. They started the whole thing off when they did the Last Ones Left album stream, which was to promote underneath. And then in July, I was lucky enough to be a part of the unplugged twist that Code Orange put for uh, Under the Skin, and it was really, really cool. I was so proud to be a part of that, and uh, perhaps you've seen it, it was great. But now we've got Back Inside the Glass, and this is something that is gonna be completely different. What I'm told is it is a live stream environmental experience. How would I know that? Because it says it on a piece of paper right there. It just says a live stream environmental experience. What does that mean? I have no clue, but we're all gonna know when we watch tonight. Now, I know you don't wanna miss out, right? Here's what you gotta do. You gotta go to live.codeorangetoth.com. Live Code Orange Toth. I know it's not Toth, but that might make it easier for you to remember. Live.codeorangetoth.com or live.codeorangetoth.com. This is going to stream at 4 p.m. Eastern, which is 1 p.m. Pacific and 9 p.m. in the UK and 10 p.m. in Europe. And right now, if you go there, you can get tickets, there's VIP packages, and it supports live music because there aren't any shows that we can go to right now, and I hate it. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit later as well. We're gonna talk to a whole bunch of bands about how they're coping during this pandemic. And uh, we've been wearing masks every day, and now it's Halloween, so I don't wanna wear a mask. In any case, uh, get ready, this is gonna be cool. Again, sign up, get your tickets, get your VIP passes, at live.codeorangetoth.com. Mud TV, it is the Mud Bangers Ball, and I am Ricky Rackman. And if any of you or your grandparents ever watched the Headbangers Ball on MTV, or maybe you've seen some videos of it on YouTube, one of the things that I used to get criticized about a lot was saying that, oh, I really like this band, or I really like this band. And it seemed like I liked all these bands, but there were bands on the Headbangers Ball that I didn't like. So when there was a video that I got excited about, I would say, I really like this band, and some people might have confused it as being ingenuine, but whenever I've said I like a band, it's because I really like a band, and I do like all types of heavy music, 
I tend to listen to probably more thrash, and that's why I really like the first video that we're going to play. It comes from the band Power Trip. Unfortunately, just if 2020 wasn't shitty enough, losing Riley Gale is such a huge loss to rock and roll because I believe Power Trip would have been pretty huge. I never met the guy. I heard that he was a really good guy, that he was the type of person who would go out of his way to help somebody out. And I can tell you that Power Trip to me feels like some of the old thrash stuff that I really, really liked. I hear Megadeth, Anthrax, sometimes I hear a little prong in it, but I never got to see them live and I'm really, really bummed about it. But I do have the music and you have the music and we have the video. I think this is really, really good shit and I hope you feel the same way I do. This is Power Trip with Executioner's Tax, Swing of the Axe.
Delaware was the first state in America. Did you know that? Do you know what else Delaware is famous for? Because I have no clue. I do know that the band Year of the Knife is from Delaware. Year of the Knife has brothers in it, has husband and a wife in it. I'm not gonna do the genre thing, but to me it's sort of industrial, straight edge, hardcore. I'm sure there's some genre that they like to refer to themselves as, and I've got it totally wrong, but in any case, shit's really good. It's really, really heavy. And another thing that COVID screwed up so many things is live, live concerts, live tours, and Year of the Night was supposed to be going out and touring with Code Orange, but we know how that ended up. But the good news is, that not only do they have a new album, they're gonna be playing that album live in its entirety. I need to start off by warning you that if you're an epileptic, don't watch this video. If you suffer from epilepsy and you're triggered by like flashing things that move really fast, this could give you a see. I don't know why I'm smiling about it. There's nothing funny about epilepsy. If you have epilepsy, you don't get to watch this video, but you can listen to it because I guess all the flashing images and strobe can, can trigger people to have seizures. I'm not making light of it, I promise you. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna shut up, which will please most of you, and I'm gonna play Year of the Knife's new song. This is called Virtual Narcotic. Yes, we are all anticipating back inside the glass. I am Ricky Rackman here with your pre-show, if you will. I do not try to pretend to know everything about new music. I listen to what I like. I would say I listen to as many new bands as I do old school bands. I mentioned it earlier before, and the one thing that I've always had a problem with, even back when I used to do Headbangers Ball, is all these different genres of music because, you know, sometimes it's hard for me to tell the difference between grindcore and deathcore and Norwegian black metal and a new genre that I, back when I did the Headbangers Ball, I had never heard of. I'm talking about shoegaze. Okay, I never heard of shoegaze. Yesterday I hadn't heard of shoegaze and I know you're all looking at me that are into shoegaze. I don't know if you're called shoegazers. And, and, and I'm not mocking your scene, okay? I'm just being honest. I have never heard of shoegaze. In the South, they have a scene called croc gaze. I don't know, that's stupid. Um, in any case, I wasn't familiar with it. And if I listen to this song and I say, I like this song, it, I like the band, I like the song, 
I didn't know that it was shoegaze. So I'm that old man that doesn't know anything about this style of music. I'm being honest with you. Never heard of shoegaze. Have you? Of course you have. Of course you have. Well, then you're gonna really enjoy this song. This is from the band Nothing, and this is brand new stuff, and this is Say Less. Thank you. 
It's no surprise that 2020 has really been a pretty rough year, especially when it comes to music. I know it's tougher for bands of all different levels. Um, what I've noticed is a lot of bands like Code Orange have been doing these live streaming things. I think that is really cool. Some bands have had some of the members get together and do collaborations and doing it on Zoom. If you're in a band, you have to think out of the box. You can't just sit there and wait for this thing to end because right now we're at home and we're starving for something new, something fresh. So I really appreciate it when bands go out of their way to put out stuff for us online. What is it gonna be like in the future? I have no idea. What I'm guessing, and this is gonna be the optimist in me, what I'm guessing is we are gonna get so many damn live shows because all these bands have been sitting here for almost a year waiting to perform for you and then all of a sudden it's gonna be okay and you're gonna see festivals with like 20, 50 of the greatest bands ever and everybody's gonna go out on the road at the same time and you're gonna to have to decide where you're gonna be spending your money. I believe, and this is a prediction, I have nothing to base this on, New Zealand, when this whole COVID thing broke out, they shut New Zealand down and they had really, really strict quarantine rules and now they're having like big sporting events. I think that New Zealand is probably gonna start having rock festivals before anybody else. And so I think a lot of bands are gonna do big shows over in New Zealand, which I think would be a really cool thing. You know, turning that frequent flyer mileage, I'll go to New Zealand and see like 50 bands play for five days because I know that all these bands are getting out there ready to play. We sent our cameras out to ask some of these bands two questions. How are you dealing with this pandemic? And what do you think the future is going to be like? And this is what they said. How's it going? This is Brendan from Incendiary. Hey, this is Ben from Tiger's Jaw. Hey guys, what up? Chris Kale from Five Finger Death Punch here. Yo, what up? This is Backwash. Hey, this is Bo from Harm's Way. Much like everybody else, I've just been trying to figure out how to navigate this world, um, how to stay uh, connected with with the people that I care about and the people that I love. Staying active is is, is a tough thing because it's such a it's such a you know a mental, a psychological, and an inspiring thing. It's hard to draw from inspiration when you're stuck in your house all day, right? Especially back in March when the lockdown was happening. Everybody in vain has been getting together as much as possible to play our instruments and just jam new ideas and keep those creative juices flowing. So the short answer is we've been writing a new record. Um, we were planning on setting aside some time after the Code Orange tour that was supposed to happen in April anyway. So this has really forced us to kind of just sit down and stay completely focused on one thing, which is nice. You know, just making beats and writing songs as usual, because that's usually my process. I'm very introverted. I write songs um, and make beats uh, by, by myself. <laughs> Um, I have been making music the same way that I always have on my computer um, and I've started playing bass. We've been using this time like a lot of other bands to work on new material and I think for us in particular you know we're a band that's three LPs in and I think the sheer amount of downtime has actually been really nice from a writing perspective because it's allowed us to explore new themes and formats and ideas that maybe we wouldn't have, you know, have spent as much time on in the past. We were writing a lot and doing some video collaborations to write for a new record. Working on some new stuff and cataloging ideas, you know. Um, we want to have stuff ready for when things get rolling, to have that, you know, loaded and ready to go. You don't want to try to play catch up, and right now is a perfect time with, again, no time constraints, no real idea when things are gonna get better. So just kind of actively using that, playing guitar every day. Um, I'm a bassist, so I'm sloppily playing guitar, uh, writing breakdowns. It's about the extent of my guitar playing expertise. No idea what it's gonna look like. I mean, it could look as something as crazy as people wearing masks at shows or, you know, limited capacities or um, it could, go back to normal. Already a, a very difficult lifestyle uh, that comes with a lot of question marks. So uh, I think now more than ever, it's really, really important for artists and musicians to feel feel confident, feel good in what they're creating. Um, you know, it's always a difficult balance of trying to pay the bills, trying to pay rent, trying to you know, 
make a living, uh, but also trying to create the art. I think you're going to see a divide between heavy music and all other types of music. I think we're going to see on the one hand, super small DIY shows be coming back sooner, along with on the other end of the spectrum, you know, really massive acts doing things like drive-in shows, um, socially distant shows, and a big focus on outdoor festivals and outdoor venues. I mean, maybe at first we'll have to wear masks and people have to sanitize more often, but I don't really see it changing. I mean, bands are still going to tour, people are still going to come out to shows. I mean, people have been dying to go to live shows for months now, so I don't really see it changing all that much. The priority for live music in the future is to make sure everyone is safe. And um, there have been some creative uh, ways that people have been done doing it. It's hard to say, man. It's hard to say. I think that, you know, history has proven that, that things always return back to the new normal that everyone's talking about. You know, it's going to be okay. Uh, live music's not going anywhere. It's just a matter of getting to a place where it's, you know, across the board, everyone agrees that it's safe. Truthfully, I don't know what the future of live music is until we get back to normal. But um, I'm excited to see what happens. I'm excited to be able to say that we're writing a record and we'll hopefully put it out when that's when someone else has figured that out. But at the same time, it, it's it's uh, it's an interesting problem to push small groups of people all over the country towards. Okay, figure this out. How are you going to make it work? Remember, Back Inside the Glass is going to be starting soon. Not only will Code Orange be performing, but the band Machine Girl is going to be opening up the show. And in a little bit, I'll tell you how you can get tickets and VIP packages. Let me tell you about Machine Girl. They're doing something now that a lot of bands are doing that I really appreciate. And that's putting some time and effort into music videos. And it's tougher than it was back a long time ago because... Record labels were throwing all kinds of money around and they had big directors and big producers and they made these extravagant music videos. And now it's sort of a DIY thing that fans have to finance it themselves, find local artists and create their own videos. And we don't have an MTV, but we could just put out the videos for the masses to see. Thank God we've got Mud TV right now. Don't you agree? So anyway, Machine Girl hired the artist Ellie Thatcher and put together this really cool video for the song Fully In It. And I guess I have to warn you again that if you're an epileptic, you shouldn't watch this video because this video also has a lot of flashing things and strobe-like effects and also some really cool stop motion from e Ellie Thatcher. So watch this video, I hope you like it. Remember they're gonna be opening the show a little bit later. This is Machine Girl with Fully In It.
For so long in the music business, there's been a big separation between artists and record labels. Now things are getting a little bit closer and many times the bands have their own label to put out music. There was one label that still is putting out great music and is so important in the history of heavy music. And I'm talking about the label Metal Blade, which was started by Brian Slagle in the early 80s. He put out this compilation called Metal Masker with all these new bands that nobody had ever heard of like Slayer and Metallica and Exodus and Possessed and he's still putting out some killer music and I can tell you the reason that he's doing it is because he truly has a love for the music and this new band that he has it's just it's fucking heavy. It's the music that kind of pets the back of your head and then it grabs you by the hair if you have any and pulls your head back and then punches your teeth down your fucking throat. This is, this is just brutal. I can't think of another way to say it. It's the kind of stuff that makes you want to work out. No music makes me want to work out, but if there was a band that made me want to work out that makes you want to just break glass, drive past, it is definitely harm's way. This is Become Machine.
I speak in generalization, so that's why I always use the term heavy music rather than say metal, rather than say hardcore, rather than say industrial. I always just say heavy music. Heavy usually means, to me, the sound of like a, just a big, fast, crunching guitar. But sometimes something can feel heavy without even having like a guitar at all. And this next band that we're gonna play, I have no idea how to explain this band at all. I think this is perfect for Halloween. I think they are very original. It's rap. I mean, I don't know how any of of saying it. It's, it's rap, but it's still got a like kind of scary, heavy undertone. This is the band Backwash, which if you look at the way it's spelled, it's actually called Backwash. And uh, it's definitely unique. And even without the guitars, it's heavy dare I say a little bit scary. This is Backwash with Don't Come to the Woods. Don't come to the woods. Don't come to the woods.
Well, that is it for my part, but this evening is really just beginning. And Halloween, probably like you, is my favorite holiday. And I really like that back in the glass is really going to capture some of that spooky feel. It's, this is gonna be incredible. This is gonna be like nothing you've ever seen before. And a live performance, of course, by Code Orange. And there's gonna be more live performances and all types of surprises. It's totally immersive. And I can't tell you really what it's like because I have no clue, but I know what Code Orange has been working on. And I'm very, very happy to be a part of this. And I hope you enjoyed it too. If you wanna find me, you can just go to uh, my Instagram or any of those other social media things. It's Ricky Rackman, R-I-K-I, R-A-C-H-T-M-A-N. I'm also riding my motorcycle all over America. And if you go to my website, which is rickysride.com, R-I-K-I-S-R-I-D.com, you can donate to the Alzheimer's Association, which is a great cause. And you can also follow me wherever I'm riding with live tracking. You can say, oh look, Ricky Rackman is gonna ride in our town. Let's go over and stop and say, what kind of an idiot doesn't know about shoegaze? And that would be me. In any case, don't forget to get your tickets and your VIP, VIP passes right now at live.codeorangetoth.com. That's live.codeorangetoth.com and order them now. I wanna thank uh, Jamie and everybody from Code Orange for letting me Come up and hang out with you for the Mudbangers Ball. I love doing this. And by the way, remember to keep one foot in the gutter, one fist in the gold. Bye.